Hey guys, I'm going to give you a quick tour on how to assemble the Open Seneca integrated air quality sensor. Let's get started. So you received the sensor in this box. And this box contains some assembly instructions a few sketches on how to capture, measure, and send, and then display the data. And on the inside, you are greeted with a message, air quality sensing powered by Citizen Science, together we can map air pollution. And you'll find an assembly leaflet here, which you can scan to go to the Open Seneca manual for the assembly. You can also contact the team. You find the sticker which goes on top of the device after you finish the assembly. Next you find the sensor box which includes the battery and the bike mount. Then we also find a little pouch with different smaller components in there, as well as well pa package the brain of the whole sensing board, which is the integrated PCB designed by Phil's lab. And most importantly, you will find the Sincerium PM sensor. Let's get started. So first I'm going to open this box. And we get the bike mount, we can unwrap that. Put this aside. It has some adhesive on top. So we stick it onto the box in the last step. We got a well-secured battery, which is a thousand milliamp hours. And we got some pre-applied double-sided adhesive in there and PCB spaces. So now let's look into our little pouch here with all the small components we need for the assembly. That's it. We got a GPS antenna, which we need in the next step. Let's put the screws aside. We got a few other screws for closing the box in the end. We got some rubber bands to mount the sensor to your bike. It's gonna get important later. Um, this is the bike mount. So this is the cable you will need to connect the SPS particle sensor to the board. Not gonna need this right now. We got a 16 gigabyte micro SD card and a display module along with four nylon PCB screws which you're gonna need soon too. Okay, and this is the seal for the for the lid. Um, so we are placing the display with the pins towards the shortest edge, or rather the edge for the display cutout that is the closest to this edge here. And next, we're gonna place the battery inside the box. For that, we need to peel off the adhesive. 
the tape that is basically covering the adhesive rather from this. This can be a bit fiddly. So I suffered a lot peeling off this adhesive, but I finally managed to do it. Um, it's not very easy. The next step is to place the battery all the way towards the top of this edge like this. It's really important. So you place it this way. So it, it kind of holds the display from here and here and the cable comes out in this top right corner. Then you use the GPS antenna and you also make it cable facing towards your right hand side. And it should fit snugly into this space here. You glue it down and that's secured in the case. Now I like to guide this cable from the GPS antenna on the outside of these two PCB spaces. It's going to be important later because you have um, some cable length that you would rather hide underneath, underneath the PCB than it being in your way on the top of it. The same goes for the battery cable which you will want to come up on the right hand side uh, on the left hand side so you just direct it this way and that should be fine so the next step is placing down the pcb um, now for the pcb i recommend you put the sd card in at this stage just to get a feel for how this mechanism works so you see these arrows here it means you can place the SD card and then lock it into from the top and then lock it, lock it into place with this mechanism. So this case for the SD card clicks up and down and um, if you push it in it will be able to rotate out. So you can rotate it out and you place the SD card in, these, in this preset frame so it kind of attaches with with the little nut in the right space so now you can't move it like this I just basically softly put it in from the top and then you bend this over again not bent but just fold rather and then it should easily push down you be able to with a click you can pull it back up and now the SD card is fully secure. If you want to remove it again, again, click it back, fold it out and you can just take it out. That's it. So once you got a feel for it, you'll be able to mount and unmount the SD card with everything installed in the case much easier. Next, I'm going to plug in the cable for the battery, which is this one. Just gonna plug it in. Whoop. That was actually the wrong way around. It's this way. Done. A bit harder to plug is the little cable for the antenna. It's shown here. You also notice a slight click very silently if you click it in place correctly. Um, it's not very easy, the cable resists a little bit, but yeah, that was it, that was the click. And now it should be able to, to rotate and if you pull it, it should lift off, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to stress this cable too much, you just want to put it in place. So as I said, direct it this way, this cable stays there. And now, very importantly, the display pins need to slide into into the female mounting here. So you need to look a bit from the side and see that it slides incorrectly. Um, needs a bit of practice, probably. I think I got it. So I'm just gonna push it down and it's in place. That's it. Now the display won't fall out again. 
And just for testing purposes, I recommend at this stage to turn the whole device on once because it's powered via the battery and the display, if it's attached correctly, should so show something. So I'm going to power it. And I see something on the display. So that means it's correct, correctly placed. In this case, the battery is quite empty. So we just see this battery symbol blinking here. Can turn this off again now. And as a next step, I would like to attach the PCB with four screws. And for that, we use the nylon screws that were provided within the package. Oh, this, these are just here. We use nylon screws because some contacts, these are actually fine, but this one here is the screw is quite close to these button contacts. So you don't want this to be shorted by any metal screw. So what we do is just I put it on my screwdriver, start in this corner here, place it on there, and then just screw it in until you feel it grabs and then screw down till you feel some resistance. Don't over tighten because it's just a plastic screw in the end. Next is to plug in the particle sensor. So I'd like to I'd like to plug it first and then glue it to the lid because this way we can test it. The cables only fit one direction so you should you should test um, which one works works easiest. Should be good enough. You can pull, put some pressure on the on the side of the connector here but don't again don't over over pressurize or anything. Um can turn it on again to just see what happens. That looks good. We hear the fence running of the sensor. The board is pre-flashed by us when it comes to you. Uh, if this is not the case, you can find the flash flashing guide on our GitHub um, where you just use um, a USB cable and um, you need to download a driver and the software and then flash the board so it gets the latest firmware. But in this case, this has been done for us and we already see some values here, temperature, humidity and particulate matter. In this case, we're good to go. Turn it off again so we don't touch any of the electronics while it's live. Um, and let's attach the particle sensor to the display. Now for that we again need to peel off some adhesive here. You might need some nails for this or, or a pair of tweezers again. But this one is easier to peel off than the, than the bottom one. That's it. You're not gonna see this anyways later, hopefully, when the bike mount is, is on that. So you can see the footprint of the of the particulate matter sensor on the PCB. That's where it goes, um, basically covering the processor and the GPS sitting on there. Um, for that, you need to bend these cables slightly. It's gonna be a slight challenge because we don't want these cables to be stuck anywhere in between here when we close the box. So we need to also make sure that this connector doesn't rip off. So I'm just putting some pressure from this side and placing it here. So it's directly in the footprints. If you notice from the top, you see that the particular meta sensor is shifted to the right of the board because this footprint is too. Um, that's intentional. So just put it so it lines up with this corner here. Make sure the cable doesn't overlap from the sides and this should be perfect. Now we need to, you see the stickers also slightly aligned towards the left. We need to now place it with this edge on this edge so it can breathe because this is basically the breathing hole of the whole sensing device. So we place it touching the corner here 
this edge and we just glue it on there like this should be good plus some pressure but it shouldn't go anywhere now so if you did everything right this should fall into place and you can close it um, now one thing we didn't do yet and I should have done this earlier um, but maybe for purposes of showing you it's not too bad um, I am gonna dismount this again and apply the seal so the boxes come with the seal so it's weatherproof and that's this little white thing you can just push it into the into this rim here around the edge and if you have any anything left over like this is very normal you just cut it off with a scissor done okay that's it now we're good to close the close the lid again make sure nothing gets stuck in there no battery cable no SPS cable should be fine so it it wants to resist a little bit which is fine um, that's what the screws are for they hold it in place just put them in and screw it down again don't don't overdo this Okay, now we got this box ready. Um, next, we want to attach the bike mount. Again, we have this 3M adhesive. Um, it's relatively easy to peel off if you compare it to the last one. Take this away. And we again want to have, have it basically on this edge here. So it's um, very central on the device, but note that the PM sends it slightly dislocated towards the right, so we want to have this central. Um, it takes a bit of, of practice to see this, but you could also measure it. You just push it on the And good to go. Next, as a final step, we need to apply the sticker. For this, we found it very useful that you turn the device on first. It also indicates on the sticker here, wait until the screen turns on to align the sticker, because it's much easier to have the alignment mark along the edge of the, of the readable part of the display, rather than aligning it with any edge of the of the sensor because it might be off on the bottom then. Um, so I'm going to turn this on. What I'm also going to do while this boots up is I'm going to remove this protection film here. Don't need that. Okay, so let's peel off the sticker. Like this. Again, it's not the end of the world if you mess this up, you can reapply it. It's a bit like applying a phone, phone screen protection. So I'm quite, I think I'm happy with this. Look at the top as well, so it's, it's aligned. I think I'm happy this way. No, I'm not happy. I'm going to put it a bit higher up. Okay, should be good. So I first press a bit here, and then you need to work your way to the sides, so you don't get any air bubbles trapped here in here. There you have it.